Literally, there are thousands and thousands of studies that show the benefits of, of fruits, vegetables, nuts. Right. What we are saying is, if all you eat for your whole life ever is just meat, that's not good. How I don't have know? to be a doctor. I'm just like, flat. I'm blown away right now. Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So it's been far too long since I made an episode about my old buddy, Dr. Travis Stork and his TV show, The Doctors. And the reason why I wanna talk about him now is because he just had a couple young ladies on the show who were on the carnivore diet. But the far more interesting part about this show was the doctor they brought on, Dr. Salatino, to argue for the benefits of the carnivore diet and simultaneously talk about how bad it is for us health-wise to eat plants. Thank you. I am bringing attention to the notion that fruits and vegetables contain things that can be harmful to humans. Oh really? So I guess the high cholesterol content, the heme iron, the saturated fat found in meat isn't harmful for humans. Well how about say heterocyclic amine which can mutate our DNA and can cause cancer. How about exposure to dioxins? Over 90% of dioxin exposure comes through meat and even fecal bacteria which is contaminated with most meats. That's not harmful I guess, huh? Oh yeah, and TMAO, how could I forget? They had vegan cardiologist, Dr. Joel Kahn on video call. The National Institutes of Health just gave the Cleveland Clinic $12 million of our taxpayer money to study the impact of meat on TMAO and the microbiome because there are 1,000 studies that are indicating harm. And I am a world expert on TMAO, Dr. Sell. So anyway, this pro-meat doctor's point here about some plants might have some toxins for some people and therefore we should avoid all plants seems completely disingenuous because he's conveniently overlooking and not talking about the many harmful things that are found in meat. There are toxins in plants that we do not need things in plants and that there are no studies showing that meat is damaging for humans. Well, I'm sure most people would agree that developing cardiovascular disease and or having a heart attack is damaging for humans. And there's been multiple studies published by multiple researchers that have taken lifelong meat eaters that have suffered major cardiac events and were later subjects in studies where they were switched over to 100% vegan diets. And these people, the subjects on vegan diets, nearly all of them, over 99% of them, suffered no more cardiovascular events. So this alone should show you that eating meat is not particularly good if you don't want to die of the number one killer of people in the West. When you're recommending this diet, what risks do you discuss with your patients? I don't think there are any risks to eating animal foods exclusively. Really, not a single risk whatsoever. You got to be kidding. There are no studies interventionally that show that eating meat is going to increase the risk of any single cancer. From that statement, it makes it sound like there's absolutely no risk whatsoever to eating an all meat diet. But check out his wording. He said cancer specifically. I mean, there's all other sorts of health risks that could come from a meat only diet, such as diabetes, stroke, heart disease. But let's focus on what he said here about cancer. There are no studies interventionally that show that eating meat is going to increase the risk of any single cancer. He basically said there are no clinical studies that show there's a connection between eating meat and cancer. Well, I'm not an expert in this field. I'm not a professional researcher, so I can't say for sure if there are or are not any clinical trials that have researched the link between eating meat and risk for cancer, but I know for sure there's been prospective studies done on this very matter, and the studies are very persuasive that there is indeed a link between meat consumption and colorectal cancer risk. And in addition, the World Health Organization examined the scientific literature and concluded that every 50 gram portion of processed meat you consume increases your risk risk of colorectal cancer by 18%. I don't think there are any risks to eating animal foods exclusively. I don't know, I'm not buying it. Either he's just flat out lying and knows it or has a very unique way of interpreting the data, kind of like Chris Kresser. And next, back to the doctor's panel here, a former prosecutor cross-examines him because she doesn't believe he's a nutritional expert in the field. And you are a psychiatrist, am right, I correct? Right, a residency in psychiatry. So what do you know about nutrition? What is Where did you gain your background in nutrition? Yeah, it's a completely valid question, but I want to point out just because he is a psychiatrist by training doesn't mean he's automatically not a health and nutrition expert. For all we know, he went back to school and studied nutrition for years, maybe did a residency and learned some internal medicine. Let's see what he said he did. I went to medical school and I studied nutrition in medical school. 
Well, that's really not saying a whole lot. Many of you guys are probably aware that doctors receive virtually no training in nutrition in medical school. At most, it's one course. It's often it's just a lecture for a few hours. And I studied nutrition independently. One of the crazy things about medical school is that it teaches you how to read articles. So in other words, he thinks he's a nutritional expert because he's read scientific articles. This sounds a lot like what Chris Cresser's claimed a nutritional expertise was. So Chris, would you consider yourself a nutrition expert? Um, no. I would consider myself someone who is adept at reading the literature. So basically anyone can read the scientific literature, but to truly be an expert in the field, one typically publishes. Did Chris Cresser publish anything? No, I, I couldn't find anything. But that's no, no, not what you were saying that. You were no. saying that to try to make it seem that he's less of an expert. Well, he is. I'm not an expert either. And as well, let's see if our pro meat doctor here has published any scientific literature of his own. Have you written any articles that was as suggested by the physicians who've been here today? What does writing articles have to do with my well, knowledge? Well, because I could become you. Because I read all of the data and all of the um, articles on this subject. Now I'm an expert. You practice be. psychiatry, I is that correct? medicine. So what makes you an expert in this? Because an expert in what? An expert in understanding human physiology? How I want to know what kind of testing you've done, what kind of data you have, what you yourself have found. I'm not sure other than what reliance is on other people's I'm not fighting. sure I understand your question because that's how You don't want to listen to my question because I'm, you know I'm right. Wow, that was a pretty vicious cross-examination there. Well, sitting pretty much right next to the doctor is someone who has more training in the field of health and nutrition. And let's see what she thinks about his all-meat diet. I'm a board-certified physician nutrition specialist. Right. I have been practicing nutrition exclusively. I'm trained as an internist. I was originally board-certified in internal medicine. I have spent 20 years. You've been dallying in this for a few years, reading articles. I've been doing it, working with patients. Meat but is dangerous. Show me the study that broccoli is dangerous okay. to lupus. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I will show you the study. Did you hear what he said there? He said he would provide her the study that shows that broccoli is harmful for lupus. Well, I call shenanigans. Again, I say he's flat out lying. I'd love to see such a study. I say there's no such study. If there happens to be one, please prove me wrong. Comment down below and link to this study. I'd love to see it. And by the way, that female doctor is not a vegan. Anyway, let's continue on. There's other doctors on stage here who are not buying what he's saying. Can you please just provide the name of one reputable medical journal that supports the meat diet. That's what they are asking. Thank you. So in 1930, there was a study published in the British, the British Medical Journal of a, uh, a year-long investigation of two people in Bellevue Medical Hospital who are eating an exclusive carnivore diet. No dangerous changes in blood pressure, kidney function. They only experienced good things, a little bit of weight loss. There have been prolonged, detailed studies of a full carnivore diet it's a one-year study known. from 1930. Of two people. Yes, it's a study from 1930 and of two people. I mean, this is just one more person than an anecdotal story. And let's take a look at this study here from 1930. Something that he failed to mention that is even this study from 1930 was funded by the meat industry. Has there been anything since 1930 with more than two people? There was a study at Harvard done looking at the carnivore diet with regard to gut flora. And so they put people on a carnivore diet for one week and they looked at changes in gut flora and they didn't see any change in the microbiome in terms of alpha diversity. There was one no week. Really, just a one week study on gut flora, that's it. I mean, Dr. Stork actually knows quite a bit about gut flora. It's been a major topic of his for the past several years and he lets this guy have it. Literally, there are thousands and thousands of studies that show the benefits of, of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and, and we're not saying one. meat's bad for you. Right. I ate meat last night. Right. What we are saying is if all you eat for your whole life ever is just meat, that's not good. How I do don't have know? to be a doctor. I'm just like, flat. I'm blown away right now. <laughs> Wow, that was pretty awesome. I mean, for those of you who don't know Dr. Stork, he's usually really cool, calm, and chill. I've never seen him just go completely ballistic like that on a guest, and a medical doctor guest as, as well. So it just shows you how preposterous and unscientific his claims are, that there's scientific studies proving his diet, which he hasn't proved anything yet. And Dr. Khan further takes him to task on this. I wonder what Dr. Saladino, a colleague of mine and a psychiatrist who's doing research on 
This morning in the National Library of Medicine PubMed is all the research studies that are randomized on the carnivore diet. There is not one. Indeed, the carnivore diet, despite Dr. Saladino's claims here, it's not an evidence-based diet. It's merely a trendy fad diet. Let's just call it for what it is. I want to share with you, when his colleague, Dr. Sean Baker, ate one year on the carnivore diet, his hemoglobin A1C was 6.3. That's pre-diabetic. His testosterone was under 250. It took a long time to get him to publish his data and he's never republished it. So with Dr. Khan showing Baker's blood test there, we've gotten away from the realm of science, but I think it's interesting to compare his to mine because we were both born the same year. And unlike Baker, I've been showing my blood tests every year for you guys here. So I'm giving you guys complete transparency about how my diet's been affecting me health-wise. And I've never even come close to being pre-diabetic in my hemoglobin A1C test. It's been pretty much the same the entire time I've been showing you guys my results. And testosterone, I got my first testosterone test last Last year I had to ask for it they don't include that normally and my levels compared to his 237 mine were nearly 750 which is even high for a young man in his 20s remember I'm 52 years old oh yeah I should mention that Baker undoubtedly will respond with that it doesn't matter that his levels are so low and mine are so high what really matters is that he can out deadlift me by whatever 500 pounds because he's been weight training and bodybuilding for like four decades and I'm just a basketball player so anyway, guys, let's get back to Dr. Stork and Dr. Saladino and the Doctor's TV show here. As you see, there's virtually no scientific evidence, any studies published in any peer-reviewed journals that show the healthful benefits of eating an all-meat diet, whereas there's a, a mountain of research showing the healthful benefits of a plant-based diet. So if all that Dr. Saladino can really provide here is one study from 1930 that was conducted on two people and was funded by the meat industry, well, that is really not showing all that much to prove how safe and healthy and effective people following a carnivore diet long term really are. So if you're following it, you're really taking your health into your own hands and you're putting yourself at great risk. Anyway, leave your questions and comments down below. Let me know if you saw this episode of The Doctors. What did you think? What did you think of the case that um, Dr. Saladino presented? Let me know what you thought of Dr. Stork losing it there on him. I just thought that was pretty Priceless. I would have made a video about that just on its own. Unfortunately, it was about a carnivore diet. So let me know what you thought down there. Hit like if you like this video. Share it with friends of yours who are hearing about this trendy carnivore diet and think it's cool and want to try it out. They think it's all scientific. Let them know what's really up. So that's it for this time, guys. Until next time, let's vote vegan. Round and